Hi everyone, my name is Yvette Young and I play guitar in a band called Covet and today I'm going to be teaching you an excerpt from our song Atreyu. One of the techniques I use in that song is finger tapping in juxtaposition with a lot of finger picking and I was going to give some tips on how to achieve that. First of all, I was going to talk about setup. For tapping on guitar, I suggest having lower action. My personal action on the guitar is low, but not low enough so that it buzzes when I do play chords, because I do a lot of like combo moves, like uh, finger picking on the fretboard and then tapping as well. Another thing that I have in my setup is I actually use thicker strings. I used to use 12s, but I recently downgraded to 11s because I wanted to bend a little easier. But having thicker strings, I find personally, allows for kind of like a fuller tone. Um, and better sustain. In terms of effects for practicing tapping, I usually just go directly into the amp because I want to make sure that I can play the part cleanly, just super dry. But then for a little boost when I play live, I like to play through compression. What compression does is it kind of evens out all of the sound. Like for tapping, it's kind of like a more harsh timbre. And then for chords, sometimes it tends to ring out louder than the tapping. And I find that compression is like getting like a spade and just smoothing it all out so that it sounds nice and fluid. But again, I like to practice without it so that I can get as much fluidity as possible just dry in the amp. So I'm just gonna dive into teaching you the song. For this song in particular, I am using an alternate tuning. I started using alternate tunings because I got bored of like just depending on shapes and standard and I kinda wanna write with my ear and I find that also some of these tunings allow for me to use the lower strings as drones, almost like implied bass parts um, to fill out some of the tapping. I like having the lower notes ring out over the tapping because it, I think tapping by itself can sound kind of thin, but when you juxtapose it with finger picked elements and chords, it can sound really full, like there's multiple guitars playing at once. For this song, my tuning is F A C G B E. Let's hear what that sounds like. And for this particular song, I use a capo. The capo will be on two. I like to retune when I put on a capo, so I'm gonna do that real quick. So when I'm writing and learning a part, I like to use a technique called chunking. I find that chunking helps me break it up into little digestible bits and I can focus on specific sections and then I can focus on stringing it all together. Um, it's just less threatening that way. So the excerpt I played earlier from the song was really long and there's like a lot of moving parts and a lot of different techniques happening. For the sake of helping you learn this part, I'm gonna assign letters to each part. I'm gonna go ahead and start with section A. Let's hear what that sounds like. So let's call that A. I'm gonna play it really slowly so you can hear it again. So one thing to know about A is that, as you can see, I am picking up here on the fretboard. Um, that's probably gonna be really awkward and uncomfortable for people who aren't used to doing that. But I do that so that I don't have to jump around a lot and it saves a lot of time and it helps with speed. So what's going on the first part of A is I'm just letting those three open strings drone. For the sake of just convenience, I'm going to refer to the string names as what they are in standard, but we did use an alternate tuning, so it's not going to actually be the note that I'm referring to, and we have a capo on. So you're going to let open low E, D, and G ring out. And you're going to come in with a hammer on on the second fret on D. You're going to tap on uh, two and four. So. Um. One notable thing that happens at the end is I'm actually tapping two strings. Uh, I'm sliding basically the distance of three frets. Um, and I do that because it, it's just a nice way to harmonize your tapping so that it sounds like there's like a chord moving instead of just a single note. So all together. 
I definitely recommend that you practice it slowly at first and then you work your way up to speed. Because what happens if you just try to play fast is you end up being really sloppy. And I think true mastery of a part is being able to play it at any tempo. And I actually do like to practice with a metronome because as much as I love natural feel, I feel like with certain things it's nice to like have a grid to lock in to make sure you can do it consistently. I'm calling that part A1 because um, I'm going to play it again but there's going to be a slight variation at the end. And that variation is instead of sliding up, we're going to slide down. So that sounds like... So it's literally the same thing, except instead of... I'm going... So let's hear what that sounds like together. A1, and I'm calling the second one A2. There we go. That's part A. I'm gonna go to part B now. Part B starts on also a droned out open string, but instead of low E, we're gonna do A. So it sounds like. So that's pretty straightforward. There's no tapping going on there. And I'm just picking down here because I don't have to do any tapping. So it's okay to like go down here because it actually sounds fuller. And then I'm gonna call this next part C. One notable thing about C is it starts on the A string, but you're gonna be on the fifth fret. For that tap on the high string, for that part, I'm having to mute the rest of the strings because what happens sometimes when you tap is there's a bunch of overtones that ring out and a bunch of other open strings that you don't want to hear that might be atonal and dissonant with what you're playing. So um, using my left hand while I do that tap, I'm actually holding all the strings and muting them here. So um, you kind of have to do it slyly while you're still finger picking. So let's see what part C sounds like. So that's part C. The next part, it's actually gonna be part A again, but we're gonna do a slight variation on it. So I guess I'll call it A3 followed by A4. So it's basically the same thing, but instead of those open strings, you're gonna be playing. It's just gonna be the uh, high E and the G string with your finger on the third fret of the high E. And then you're gonna just do like what we did in part A. And then A4 is basically that again, but a variation on it, so. So it's like. So it's like that, so. Let's hear it all together. And part B is basically going to be the same, but instead of, we're going to play. So if you remember, it goes like. And that sets you up nicely to go into part D, which goes like. I'll play it again. So now we've learned all the individual parts. We went from A1, A2, B, C, and then A3, A4. A little variation on V and D. So that's a lot. We know each section individually, but the main issue is now stringing it together to make it fluid. So um, I get excited about this part when I practice because it kind of feels like playing a video game where each letter is like a level and you have to master a certain levels to get the next one. So I like to just practice going through the parts and seeing how far it can get. So let's, let's try.
And the thing about this part is it just like loops a bunch of times. So I would have to practice going from D back into A1, so. So I'm pretty much able to play it fluidly. Of course, it's because I wrote the part and I've practiced it a lot. Um, I'm sure it's, it's gonna take a few tries to get it really fluid. But if you have any problem areas, I suggest just being able to hop into a specific letter. One of the perks of assigning letters to parts is it helps you have an organized way to refer to things, which also helps you communicate it to bandmates if you're teaching them parts or if you're like referencing certain sections. Yeah, like if I'm struggling with like going from a2 to B, I'll just like tackle that one problem area. And I find that it's helped me in live settings where because I've practiced jumping in at any section of the part, uh, if I fall off or something, I can just like jump in really easily. So it's actually preparing you for live disasters. <laughs> so at this point, I'm still playing it slowly. Let's try to up the speed of it. And this is where a metronome comes into play because if you don't have a metronome, the parts you're uneasy on, you'll probably like naturally slow down and then you'll rush things that you're confident about. So it's important to be able to keep steady. I think that's also a sign of mastery of a part is when you're able to like play it consistently. So set your metronome. I don't really have one here, but I'm gonna try to play it at a faster speed. part of learning this part is adorning things with effects. So the way I most of the time write is I find that my melodies are kind of like black and white drawings. I was an art major, I studied visual art, so a lot of my frames of reference are probably going to be visual. But uh, yeah, I find melodies to be like black and white drawings that you have opportunities to color in at specific sections to help things come to life. And for this section, I thought it would sound so cool with like a nice blooming delay. It kind of helps the part open up and also, one bonus is it kind of hides like little imperfections because you're just drowning in this beautiful ambient soundscape. So let's try to throw on some delay. So you can use any delay you want. Um, for the sake of this part, I'll have it set to just the basic eighth note delay with um, low to mid feedback. I find that if it's like too high, it just sounds like a mess because you're it's already really noty. I feel like high feedback delay sounds great for like ambient like chords, but for the sake of adding it to tapping, I'm just going to clean it up a bit and err on the side of caution. It's probably great to have a delay where you can set the tempo by tapping. That's what I do live is um, I'll kind of just tap it in and then go into the section because if the delay is off with the tempo of what you're playing, it's going to sound again like a mess. So let's see what that sounds like. So the excerpt you just learned was from my band Covet song, Atreyu. It's like this tapping interlude section in the middle. Um, it's super washy because of the delay and there's a bass solo on it. But yeah, just in case you want to listen to it for reference and context. Thanks everyone for watching my little mini lesson. Uh, hopefully it'll inspire you to apply the techniques tapping and finger picking to your own songwriting. Hopefully you can figure out cool ways to even use open tunings in your writing as well. And in terms of the effects we use, I hope that um, maybe you'll be inspired to think about how you can use effects to enhance your sonic storytelling as well in the songs that you write to help emphasize and help certain parts come to life. <laughs>